Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you're having a good day. So let's see how this flick and spin bloom turned out today. It was actually using some leftover paints and I had some garnet red, copper, mixed blue and Payne's grey, deco art, Amsterdam titanium white. And the base today is the Pebio copper. All the information will be in the description below. So let's see how this turned out. I don't know about you, but if you've ever used Pebio, a metallic copper, the way it falls, it has lots of really fascinating detail to it. Almost like it has a few shades to it. So I'm just using my trusty hairdryer now to even out the paint on the surface. And I'm making sure to leave a fairly thick layer of paint. Now all the consistency of the paints are completely the same. The base is the same as all the other paints. And when I've been doing some paintings recently, I thought, goodness me, I've got so many different paints left over. What shall I use for this palette? So I actually did a lucky dip and I actually love these colours. I didn't know how they were going to turn out or how they're going to mix together, especially when there's a metallic base um, that I decided to go for, which I haven't done before. And a, another metallic, another two metallics and a mix of paints. That I didn't know the consistency of, so it's quite a risk this one, but I'm really glad I did it. And it's part of the fun, isn't it, of being an artist or creative that you experiment with what you've got. So I'm just now finishing off, making sure all the different corners are covered. It's so good to get the corners covered in each of the paintings. Nothing worse than when you see a painting dry and it looks as though the, the painting hasn't been covered. Um, you can touch it up always though. Um, but it just has a, a nice even finish look to it when you do it at the beginning. Or when you do it before the other paints go on top. So starting off with a mix of blues, it's the Payne's Grey and that's mixed with some blue green. So there's titanium white in the centre now. And this next colour, Garnet Red by Deco Art, it's got to be my favourite paint at the moment. The way it plays with the paints, it's just gorgeous. So I've at this point, no idea how it's going to turn out. And then we've got Deco Art. 24 karat gold it's a bossy paint i keep coming back to it um, it keeps telling me in lots of different places that actually it's not going to play nicely but i keep insist on bringing it in um, but it is it's a fascinating color and it does so many different things so it's quite an experiment so that last color there was a real mix of colors and there's Payne's gray with a tiny bit of oxide amsterdam black there so I'll put that in the description on the other paints. So I'm just literally using my hairdryer and I realised at this point I hadn't put the extra paint around it to help with the, the flow of the blowout. So that's what I'm doing now, just putting that extra bit of copper around what I see as the bullseye. And then I'm going to blow it out a little bit before the next stage. So I'm just using the hairdryer and I'm using it upside down because it gets me more accuracy and I'm blowing it out in four different parts from the oxide black grey centre there. I just want to literally just spread the paint at this point and it's forming a little bit of a bloom but as it develops you'll see hopefully the bloom more clearly. Okay so that's as much blowing out I'm going to do at this stage now and just use the blower to get rid of those air bubbles give it a spin so we're just spreading out the paint interestingly even though the consistency in the drip test showed that the copper was of the same consistency of the other paints because i'm not 100 percent sure because these are leftover paints what's in all of them, although I don't tend to mix them that differently generally. Um, I can see that the base coat feels and is 
is looking slightly thicker. So that's interesting, something to revisit. So now I'm gonna do that process again. I've got the blues, white in the middle. It's forming some gorgeous copper drips down below. I collected all those again and made another paint mixture. Some garnet red, and then a drop of that oxide black. Mixed with Payne's Grey. So now comes the exciting bit. I do love this. So satisfying. So I'm, click, I'm flicking out from the dark center and those flicks there are feeling quite satisfactory, but I'm forming a sort of bloom shape as I go around. And I'm really wanting the bits of paint that fall to be in between the bits that have been blown out. There's several different ways of doing a flick and spin. You can do blowouts twice, you can layer it, chill three times. Um, I feel it's quite intuitive and this felt right for this particular painting, but I will be looking at these a bit more and trying different methods. Um, I've got an older video as well where I've got two flick and spins. Um, so I'll put the link to that as well, um, to that video at the end of this one those videos. So just getting rid of the air bubbles now and I'm beginning to see some nice little cells rising up and then the spin to help the paint to even out a little bit more. Can you see that gold? It's actually mixing really nicely with these paints so that was a complete experiment and I can't wait for you to see the dried and the wet version at the end. Just now spinning it out a little bit more and I can see that even though before the base looked a little bit thicker, actually when I'm spinning it, it's playing and moving at the same speed as the other paints, which shows that the consistency is okay. It's just the appearance sometimes of metallics can be very different and it is bit of a risk if you're mixing different types of paints together. Okay, so I've done enough spinning now for a moment and I'm just going to use my palette knife to help that formation and to bring in some of the, the copper base into the center. So as you can see, I'm turning around the spinner, which is so good to maneuver the paintings of this size, just enjoying intuitively making those divides with the petals in between each one. I do make sure I just really do clean off my palette knife on a, a bit of wet towel or um, kitchen towel. So I'm almost finished now with the forming of this bloom. What are you thinking as you see it? Are you enjoying the colours together? What do you think about the colours? Are there any other colours that you would like to see in a bloom? And do you ever take those leftover paints and make a bloom yourself? What sort of blooms do you do? Do you tend to pick the colours intuitively or do you tend to have a think about it and think about oh, what colours would go together? I do think that even though I did a lucky dip and picked up some random paints, if I hadn't have liked the colours, I would have swapped them around. Okay, so here is the wet result here, and I'm really loving these colours together. Can you see where the flick has landed and there's a spin on the right hand side in the corner? Can you see it at the top? That is my favourite bit, just where the the paint has landed that's been flicked from the center. So I'm really quite enjoying the copper and the blues together and how there's almost a natural fading from the center and the red into the blue and then into the copper. The copper almost enhances it. So I just want to say today, it's been a really fun painting. Really hope you enjoyed the process. If you have a go, please do tag me in and show me what you did. Um, 
Harmony House, the lovely lady from there. She's a real inspiration with Flick and Spin as well. Go and have a look at her channel and check out what she's done too. So I want to say thank you so much for being here today. I've really enjoyed this painting. Can't wait to do some more. And I love hearing from you and what you're up to with your paintings, and your creative journey. So here's the dry result and how it could look. It was a bit bigger on a wall. Have a wonderful day and I hope to see you soon. Bye.